Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. There are other videos about small buck converters. This video concentrates on the converter with three trimmers, as shown in this picture. It shows its function and the purpose of all three trimmers. But first, what is the purpose of a buck converter? A buck converter produces a stable voltage which is always lower than the input voltage. Simple converters like this one have only one trimmer which is used to choose the desired voltage. Modules like that are useful if you want to reduce the voltage from a high level to a lower level. In this example I use a bench power supply with 24 volts and I want to reduce the voltage to 4 volt. To show you the effect of a buck converter I use a resistor as a load. On the 4 volt level the current is roughly 700 mA which means the resistor has to dissipate 4 volts time 0.7 ampere means 2.8 watts. You would expect that the power supply has to deliver also 700 mA. But here it has to deliver much less, only 160 mA. If we make the power calculation, 24 volts times 0.16 ampere equals 3.8 watts. The buck converter has an efficiency of 2.8 watts divided by 3.8 watts equals 74%. 26% are lost and have to be dissipated by the buck converter itself. This is not an extremely good value, however it keeps the converter pretty cool even in situations with reasonable high currents. If you connect the buck converter to 12 volts, the situation is even better. It only needs 3.5 watts and therefore the efficiency is 2.8 divided by 3.5 watts equals 80%. The converter I will test today can limit the current in addition to stabilize the voltage. It is a little more expensive, but I would recommend to use this one all the time because it is always good if you can limit the current if something goes wrong with your project. Now let's start to see how it works. The right trimmer sets the voltage and the left trimmer limits the current. One LED lights up to inform you when the current is limited. But the purpose of the middle trimmer and the second LED is still not completely clear to me. During my tests it had no obvious function. I can turn it from completely left to completely right and both the voltage and the current stay more or less the same. Only the middle LED sometimes goes on and off. Other testers of the modules suggested that the trimmer and the LED are only useful for battery charging or solar panels. But its function is not completely clear. To analyze the function of the middle trimmer I connect the buck converter to a constant current load. Usually this equipment is quite expensive. Fortunately I found a module which is affordable I post the link into the comment. It comes without the enclosure, so I just printed one. First I adjust the voltage to 8.2 volts. Then I set the load to 1000 mA and with the left trimmer I try to find the point where the current limitation starts. As soon as current limitations begin, one red LED starts to glow. If I change now the current, the LED goes on and off and the current is limited by the buck converter as expected to about 1000 mA. The current limiter has a small hysteresis which means that the on and the off currents are not exactly the same. 
This is good as it reduces the chance for oscillations. Look at the second red LED, it is always off. Now let's keep the trimmer for the current limitation at 1000 mA and turn the load down to 100 mA. If I turn now the middle trimmer, I can make the second LED go on and off. This means the second LED is on as long as the current is bigger than 100 mA and it goes off if it is lower than that. This can be used for battery charging. If the battery is full and the charger only charges with a small current of less than 100 mA, the second LED goes off and you are informed that the battery is fully charged. So the mystery of the third trimmer is revealed. By the way, I found an explanation for the middle trimmer in one of the data sheets of the LM2596. I post the link in the comment. In the next episode I will prove this hypothesis in reality by loading two LiPo cells. Because this takes a long time and I do not want to sit always at the table till the LEDs go on or off, I have to build a data logger for volt, milliampere and for the status of the LEDs. I hope this episode was interesting for you. Bye.